this idea that like these hundreds of thousands of individual hairs kind of start to wiggle around each other and integrate and get tighter and tighter, this like mass of individuals coming together and just getting denser and denser and stronger and stronger, that idea of the strength being in numbers. My name's Lisa Klukulik, and I'm a visual artist who's found a strong affinity for working with wool fiber, and in particular, the felting process. Attracted by its protective and nurturing qualities, I found wool fiber a relevant material to use in my work that's related to concepts of human vulnerability and security. So I'm basically wrapping the entire resist in an even layer of fiber. It's not felt yet. So trying to keep the the wool snug up against the edge. So you can imagine it's gonna be like a, just a big balloon of felt around the outside. I attribute the sense of contentment and calm that I feel when I'm working in the studio to the constant touch involved in the process, as well as bringing an idea into fruition and while well being in control, because I like control. I find that a systematic scientific approach in my studio making is time efficient. It enables me to get my desired results, repeat effects as well as modify them strategically to get what I want. I approach my workshop instruction in a similar way, trying to provide a foundational understanding of the material so that students can not feel trepidation approaching their own ideas. So the bubbles are acting like hundreds of little fingers so that when I start to actually agitate all those little bumps of air wiggling around on the surface, kind of creating a really gentle vibration. And as the fibers intertwine, they stop being able to be pulled apart and you start to kind of get that skin. But you need that idea, that inspiration. What is it that you want to say and communicate in your work? I have to schedule in time to adventure, to look, to think, not just to make. In my life and in my art, I have to find balance between the routine and the spontaneous. I do that by taking any opportunity to adventure wildly into the unknown, encountering other cultural systems, places, phenomenon. One of the things that I've been most grateful for in my life is the opportunity to travel abroad to teach. So I recently got to travel into southern Chile and see some glaciers for the first time, and that's what's been inspiring, all the blue work and all the angular structural forms. So it's that idea of felting on faith. You would think that this would be way too delicate to even start to handle this way. But the fibers have integrated and are holding on. So I can pull the template, the plastic resist, out. You know, this really delicate yet strong sack. I'm gonna do this just for the hell of it because it's really fun and I do it in my classes. So you, you have all this airspace, but you have water and soap in the airspace right now, so it's making an actual seal. So believe it or not, that will shrink down firm against that metal cage when this is shrunk. Obviously, if I agitated it too aggressively right now, I'm gonna just poke those metal points right through the skin. But I've got all these different stages of felt going on in the same piece where this one's still super delicate and I want to barely be moving this one around. Where this one's much firmer and stronger and this one's almost done. So I've got to be able to move kind of throughout the piece and be able to feel and see where the felt's at and change my pressure. Though I've calculated the shrinkage of the felt skin that covers each glacier, I really don't know how the bent angles of the metal form is gonna interplay with that skin until I stitch around them, making each piece individual, like a snowflake. I can't think of the last time I was dying with indigo, 
but working with the glacier subject matter definitely demanded I use blue. If you look at the color underneath the water, it's kind of a yellowy green, and that's what's showing me that there's the right reduction, the right chemistry for the fiber to be put in. And you can see just where the, the edge of that is turning blue, and that's because it's hitting the oxygen. What I'm trying to do is create a gradation of blues, so I'm, I dipped most of it the first time to get the light blue at the top, and then I just keep removing more and more parts of it and dipping <clears throat> just the bottom. And that's the, the more dips in the, in the bath, um, the more blue. When I was in Chile and got to see the glaciers for the first time and spent some time in a glacier museum and really was understanding more about how the phenomenon occurs and learning more about like the accumulation zone at the top, you know, the mountains and the way the glaciers form and move down through the valleys and fracture as it goes through that uneven terrain. That kind of is the white background of the neck piece moving down into the kind of angular form and then speaking to what they call like the ablation zone, where you have evaporation and melt-off and cleaving of the glaciers, which is unfortunately what's happening why we're losing our glaciers. The balance is off between the accumulation and the ablation zone. So there's a double play on the meaning strong felt. The material is really strong and durable, but it's all about the emotive intention. 